Hi everyone. So we are going to go over our new opinion writing unit. And like I said on your daily assignments, we've had a preview to it. Maybe you didn't even realize it, but we did opinion writing when you were writing your paragraphs for Charlotte's Web. You were stating what your character trait was and explaining all your reasons why. And some of your friends in your class might have had a different opinion than what you had. And then also in the activity, Hey Little Ants, you also stated your opinion there about whether or not the boy should squish the ants or not. So now that you had a preview and you know that an opinion is the way that you feel and it might be different than the way that someone else feels, I really wanna dive into this a little bit more before we get fully into our unit that we're starting today. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And let's see, where is it? There we go. And what we have here, I actually did this with some of our friends on Friday during a review group when we had a lot of fun. Um, I have a little PowerPoint that I'm sharing with you about opinion writing. We're gonna go through the structure of it. This is what you're gonna be doing later this week with your opinion and writing assignments. And then I'll also go over at the end what it is that you are doing today. So this is kind of a preview as to what I expect and what you're also going to be seeing later this week. So in opinion writing, it is important, and I've gone over this with you, but it is important that you have the correct structure of what you um, should have in your paragraph. And this is what I see that a lot of you are missing, okay? Or you have it, but it's just not being written as clearly as it should. So I really wanna take the time to go over this. The first thing you can see right here, you need to have a topic sentence where you introduce the topic and give a brief description, okay? So what you need to do if it's a topic and the topic is a book that we read and I'm asking your opinion on that, you need to go and say in the book blank or the book blank is about, I want a little description. So in Hey Little Ant, you might have said the book Hey Little Ant is about a boy who had to make the decision whether to squish the ant or not. Okay, it's important just like any paragraph that you're writing that you have an introduction sentence that you introduce the topic so the reader knows, well, what is it that they're talking about? Okay, um, we've done this where we color code and our topic sentence has always been blue. So I want you to think, hmm, blue, topic sentence. Do I have that? Is it there? And if it is, check it off the list and move on. Number two, in green, it's go because now we're really getting started. Your opinion statement, okay? You need to make sure that you say the word in my opinion, okay? Because you want the readers to know that this is an opinion paragraph. You are trying to persuade them to feel the same way that you do. Because ultimately, when you're writing an opinion and you're trying to persuade someone, they want you want them to have the same idea as you by the end of it, okay? So you need to say, in my opinion, I believe that or I think that. Number three, supporting reasons. You should have at least three supporting reasons explaining why. Do you have evidence to support this? Do you have persuasive arguments to support this? Do you have three details to support this? If you don't have enough of those, then your opinion isn't strong enough. You want this person to be on your side, on your team. And if you don't have enough details or reasons to, have to um, persuade them, then your opinion might not be strong enough and you might need to think of something different or do a little bit more research. So in what I've been seeing from what you've been giving me, you might have one reason and that's great. That's a great start, but we want at least three. And then, so that's why I have it in red because we're stopping. You can't keep going until you stop at those three reasons. And then four, conclusion sentence. So do you have a conclusion sentence? Does the reader know that you are done? Okay, if you stop with a reason, I'm gonna think, wait, they're not finished yet. Are they gonna tell me another reason? This doesn't seem complete. We always talk about a paragraph being like a present. You need that topic sentence where you put that wrapping paper and that ribbon on. You need the conclusion, conclusion sentence because you wrapped up all those goodies inside, all those supporting reasons, okay? So your topic sentence, your opinion statement, your supporting reasons, and your conclusion. So I have a video here for you. And if you, um, well, actually what I want you to do right now is I want you to stop this. I want you to pause it. And I want you to click on this video. It's gonna bring you to a YouTube link. And it is the book, I Want an Iguana, which is a really fun book about a little boy who's trying to persuade his mom 
through writing letters back and forth to each other about why he wants the iguana and all of his reasons why. You'll see he doesn't just say, Mom, I really want an iguana because I think it'd be fun to have one. That's it. Mm -mm. I don't think that would work. So watch this video and see what happens. And then you can go ahead and get started back with me on the next slide when you're finished. Okay? So if you are back with me now, you've watched the video because you paused it. You watch the video, you have some ideas in your head because you're thinking, hmm, how would I put this into a paragraph? How do I include all four of those things that I need in my structure? A topic sentence, an opinion statement, three supporting reasons, and a conclusion sentence. Wow, let me show you how I would go about it. So here we are, we have a beautiful color-coded, organized paragraph with everything that I need. I know that because I have used my colors, so I can check off the list, I have those things. I also started with my title, I Want an Iguana Opinion Paragraph. And then I indented because I am getting ready for the first sentence of my paragraph, which is my, if you said introduction, great job. Have you heard the story, I'm on an iguana? It is about a boy who really wants his neighbor's iguana. So he writes letters to his mom to persuade him to have it. So I'm looking back in blue, I have my topic sentence. I introduced my character and I gave a brief description so that my readers know what it is that they're going to be reading about in the rest of my paragraph. So I'm gonna mentally check that off in my head. Okay, what's next? It's green, green means go. So what does that mean? It means that you are going to write your, if you said opinion, awesome. In my opinion, the boy should get a pet iguana. I stated it clearly, it's very simple. I put exactly what my opinion is and that was it, okay? Now, I need to back that up, okay? What did I see that the boy did in this book or in this video? Okay, what did he tell his mom? What did he do in order to persuade her in the end that he should have it? Okay, now my ideas might be different than yours because remember, these are my opinions. I'm starting with a transition word, first. First, if the neighbor has no one to give the iguana to, he will have to leave it outside and it may get eaten by a dog. Now, if you wanted to challenge yourself, you can add another detail there explaining why that would not be good, okay? Second, another transition word. The boy is responsible because he promises he will feed the iguana lettuce and give it water, okay? So I said he's responsible and I also told why. What did he say that he would do that was really persuasive? Um, oh, and I left out the, did I? Oh, finally, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to read a sentence. So second, the boy is responsible because he promises he will feed the iguana lettuce and give it water. These are things that iguana needs for survival, okay? Finally, my third reason, he knows that he can teach the iguana tricks. I added on to this. This would keep him busy since he says he is lonely. Okay, those are my three reasons. They're red because I stopped and I'm not moving on until I have my first, second, and last, or finally. And then how do I end it? Tie that bow up, my conclusion sentence where I'm gonna restate what my opinion is. These are the reasons why the boy should be able to get his neighbor's iguana, okay? So you're not gonna be doing this yet in your packet until a little bit later in the week, but I just wanna go over the structure with you since you have been working on it in your kind of previews to opinion writing. So now I'm gonna show you what it is that you are doing today. So today you have your let me grab this actually. Opinion writing packet that you are taking out of your folder. Okay, it looks like this. And I said go to the fifth page. So you have some rubrics, have a list of written words and phrases. These are really good if you don't want to use those same words like second, what can you use instead of that? And then on the very next page, you'll see something that looks like what I have on my screen in this. This is what you are doing today. And as you can see, we are going to be thinking about our opinion on the best pets. So it says people keep all kinds of animals as pets. In your opinion, which animal makes, oh wait, stop share. 
Oh yeah, we're good. I thought for one second that I wasn't um, recording. So let me go back to this. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, people keep all kinds of animals as pets. In your opinion, which animal makes the best pets? So later this week, you're going to write a paragraph explaining your answer. But today, you're going to start right here where it says track your progress under brainstorm. That is what you are doing today. So it says at the top, use the box to brainstorm all of your thoughts on this topic. You can make a list, use a mind map, or just write ideas as they come to you. Don't worry about using complete sentences, correct spelling, or writing neatly. Although I do want you to use some neatness and organization here. So if we look below, I this is kind of the way that I like to think about. It might be different for you because your mind works differently than mine. I want you to do a brainstorming that works for you. But I don't want you to just think about one pet here. I want you to think about a few pets that you like, okay? And then we'll narrow it down at the end. So I did this kind of map where I put best pet in the middle. I put in a rabbit, I drew a picture, I wrote it's friendly, it's quiet, but I also wrote a negative, you can't take it on walks, because I like being in the outdoors a lot, so I, I would want to take it on walk. Then I have a dog, I put a dog as loyal, it's playful, but the kind of dog I want, I want a golden retriever, I know it sheds a lot. So that might be a little bit of a conflict for me. And then a cat. I really like cats. I know some people have different opinions. They're sweet, at least the one that I grew up with. They're small, and but I do know that they can scratch, and I do know that they can kind of tear up a lot of things in your house. So, but all animals can do that, but especially with cats, at least in my opinion. So I think that it's going to be between a rabbit and a dog. I put a star next to the ideas that I like. And my final opinion or choice that I really reflected on in my brainstorming was that I think that in my opinion, a rabbit would be the best pet. So that's all you are going to be doing for today, okay? Just your brainstorming. And then tomorrow we'll go through and we'll start organizing um, our opinion, okay? But for today, I just want you to go ahead and brainstorm. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I will put this picture up on um, under Google Classroom, under our writing so that you can go back to it if you need to. Okay, boys and girls, I can't wait to hear about your opinions on uh, what you think the best pet is. I'm looking forward to it. Have a great Monday, okay? Bye, everyone.